Hey, so as you know, I've been working on a deep learning course and because of that, I've been doing a lot of research into how to teach things in the proper way. One thing I realized was that there are a lot of hyperparameters or you can call them just like settings or knobs and bottoms, uh, buttons for neural networks that you need to set to achieve optimal accuracy or performance. And that sometimes gets a little bit overwhelming. So that's why I prepared a summary PDF showing how everything works and where everything belongs. So in this video, I will give you a summary of the summary PDF. The first thing, of course, that we need to know is the number of neurons in the input layer. How we decide this one is basically, it depends on your data. So whatever, how many ever uh, inputs that you have in your data, you're going to need to create that many input uh, neurons. So this could change, for example, if you have a table data and you have four features other than the target feature, then you're gonna need four neurons. If you have an image that is, let's say 28 to 28 pixels, then you're going to need 28 times 28, 784 pixels or neurons in your input layer. The next one is a number of neurons in the output layer. And that one is also, I guess you cannot call it hyperparameter, but that is something that you need to set. And that again, depends on your data. If you have a binary result, for example, you could probably just do with one uh, neuron in the output layer. Uh, for example, you know, zero would be one output, one would be other output. If you have multiple classes, let's say you are taking images and you're trying to predict the number that's written on that image, then you're probably going to need to have as many neurons as you have numbers. So in that case, if you're doing, going from zero to nine, you're gonna need 10. Another group of layers that we have is the hidden layers. So for hidden layers, there are two things that you need to decide. You need to decide how many hidden layers you want and you need to decide how many neurons in each of these hidden layers uh, that you want. So that's something that you also need to set. Another thing is a loss function. So what happens is, your network predicts something and on this prediction you need to calculate the loss of course if you want to you can go as easy as prediction minus the actual value and that will give you an error but that will probably not get you super far <laughs> if you worked on machine learning problems before i'm sure you're already familiar with some of the loss functions of error functions so this could be for regression for example mean squared error mean absolute error uh, for binary classification, you can use uh, binary cross entropy loss. So things like that. And there is basically a lot of resources online where you can find the options. Another thing is the optimization algorithm and learning rate. Uh, I kind of think of them together because they determine how the network should be updated. Um, optimization algorithm is the thing that after backpropagation, that's the thing that decides in which way should the weights or bias, so basically any parameter, be updated and learning rate tells you how far in that direction that you need to go. The next thing is the activation function. So I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this formula tells you how to calculate the output of one layer. So the W, the big W is a matrix or a vector of all the weights that belong to the weights uh, that belong to the connections and biases this b is a matrix or net, uh, vector of biases that belong to each of the neuron in this layer and x is basically the input in this case an activation function is something that we put all of these things in so that it gives us a transformation and that makes our output which is the capital a is a vector of all the outputs of the neurons of a certain layer Next, we have the batch size. Batch size is a thing that tells us how many data points should be in one batch. That effectively tells us how many uh, different groups we should divide the data into. A number of iterations, or you can call them epochs, is how many times should we run the network over the whole data. So one thing that you need to keep in mind here is how batch size and epoch can be uh, confused with each other. Batch size, when you divide uh, your data into batches, you have, let's say, like in this example, you have four batches, right? Um, what you do is you run the neural network on, or you run 
one batch of data on your neural network and then you calculate the loss and then uh, gradient descent decides which way to update the weights and the network is updated. And then you do it for the same next batch and then you do it for the next batch. So every time after all the examples in one batch are shown to the network, the network is updated. What Epoch is though, after all the batches are shown, you have run all your data through your network, right? That is one epoch. So one epoch is running your whole data on the network. So if you want to run the data on your network or train your network with your whole data multiple times, which is normally what we would do, then you would use multiple epochs. Uh, and the last two things are kind of more on the kind of like advanced things. <laughs> uh, so the first one is the weight initialization technique. Normally what we do is we just randomly initialize the weights but you can change this to deal with some of the problems that come with neural networks. Last one is regularization. Regularization is a way to stop some of the uh, neurons from firing out, so giving any output. So then, if you, depending on the regularization technique that you use, some of these uh, might be canceled out. And as a result, you might have a sparse matrix. And sometimes this helps with overfitting, and that's why people do it. If you'd like to have the summary yourself, I will leave a link below the video where you can download it as a PDF and keep it to yourself and refer back to it whenever you need it. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give it a like and maybe even subscribe if you want to hear more from me. But for now, have a nice day and I'll see you around.